SEC session. Welcome to this SBDC session. This is Beyond the Basics, Microsoft Excel. And this is the Shasta Cascade Small Business Development Center. We're a nonprofit organization and we provide confidential, no cost advisory and training services to small businesses. We are sponsored by the SBDC and the um, HSU Sponsored Programs Foundation. This is no cost expert advice. We support Shasta and Trinity counties, and here are a whole bunch of members of the team. We have 40 subject experts that are here to support you in your business in a variety of business needs. I am in the middle on the top, on the top row there. I am Linda Fitzgerald. Thanks for being here. And we'll start off with this disclaimer. The information provided in this webinar and any supplementary materials provided to registrants are intended for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute professional financial or legal advice. No registrant should act or fail to act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper financial, legal, or other professional advice specific to their situation. The Northern California Small Business Development Center and its host, the HSU Sponsored Programs Foundation, specifically disclaims any liability, loss, or risk personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the information presented in this webinar. I am Linda Fitzgerald. I spent seven years working at Microsoft. I have been a financial analyst for seven for 10 years, and I've spent the past eight or uh, gosh, we're coming up on nine years now running my own business. And to me, Excel is a tool that I use all the time. I joke with people about using Excel as a second language. So I'm excited to share this with you. What we're gonna talk about today, we, um, we have a bunch of basic features and actually I'm gonna jump in and this is an advanced feature class. So we're gonna talk about formulas, page layout, charts and pivot tables, just to name a few and probably a couple other things too. And we will address questions. When you have questions, you are welcome to put them in the chat. If there are any particular features that you would like addressed during this webinar, if you could put them in the chat, Emily is monitoring the chat for me and she can let me know um, as they come up. It just works out a little better that way. I'm gonna stop sharing this screen now and I am going to switch over to my Excel screen. Here we go. So you should be seeing uh, formulas in the upper right corner. I'm going to make this a little bit larger just because I know it can be hard to see the font if it's too small. So this, as we mentioned, this is beyond the basics. So I'm assuming you already know what the different menus are and um, how they work and how the different ribbons work. Emily can put in the chat a link to the introduction to Excel class, which I've done in the past. And that is a one hour training video. You can watch at your convenience. We have it up available for people to see again. So if you need that, it's there for you, but we are actually diving into some specifics. So right now I wanna talk about formulas. I gave, so I entered some data in here just because I want you to be able to see what's happening. There's nothing quite like watching what's going on. I entered some numbers here, 5,000, 26, 26, 45, 48. So those are numbers, these cells, I wanna see the total. And right here, I've already put the total. And the typical financial format at a total is one line above, two lines below. So you can see that format on this cell right here. Now notice when I click on the cells above, this 5,000, up here, you're seeing the number 5,000. And if I arrow down or I use my mouse, the number in the cell is showing up up here. That is true until we get to this one. And the reason is this is a formula. And the way the formula works is it is SUM, sum, is summing this date range, CE2 through E6. This is kind of like Battleship, if you've ever played Battleship. Each of these cells has an address. When I click on it, this one, for instance, the address for this cell is E, the column, and then two, the row number. And the address is showing over here. So I'm seeing the content, the item entered in the cell here, and the cell address here. 
when I arrow down, this is E3, E4, E5, E6. So now here with the formula, which is entered in there, we can see the formula to get this answer is equal sign sum E2 colon E6. E2 to E6 is a range. So it means everything between E2 and E6, which is what I have selected right now. When I select a range of cells like this, the first one selected remains white. It's still in the grouping, but it remains white. So let's go and create something where you've seen how this is created. Let's create something that you might need to do for your business. Um, we'll say that you have this particular product and I'm gonna use some of the features from the basic version of Excel, just so that some of you can see that. So here, if I wanna copy this, I have the ability to drag it down. So all of these numbers are going to be um, January numbers for product A. And we can even, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna insert a new column. And here I'm gonna put product, this is the product name. Oops. And over here, I'm gonna say um, office. So these are kind of the headers of my table. Office, this is going to be, um, let me think. This is going to be the West office. This is going to be the Central office. This is going to be the East office and mountains. We'll go with time zones. And we'll say we don't need this one. And all of them had sales in January. So we're going to put the numbers in. Okay, so these are sales and these numbers here with sales, they don't really look like sales to me because there's no dollar sign. So let's highlight that number and let's turn it into a dollar sign. So we go up here to the number format, choose the number format and there it gives that to me as the dollars that I want. Now, maybe, maybe I don't want pennies. I have the option right here to decrease or increase my decimals. Now I can also go here and say, oh gosh, I, I wish I formatted the others the same way. I'm gonna click on this particular cell. I like that formatting. I'm gonna take my mouse up to the clipboard area and see that little paintbrush format painter. I'm going to click on it. It's basically picked up, see the little moving marquee, it's picked up that format. And then if I click and drag to drop it, the format copies down. So that's a quick way to copy a format. Now I wanna create a total. Over here, I talked about the one line on the top and two lines on the bottom. So I'm gonna click on the cell that I want to have, have that formatting. I'm gonna go over here to my font area. I have a drop down box. This is the borders for each of the cells. And what I would like is the one that has top and double bottom border. When I click away from the cell, you can now see that format applied. And I can go in here and I can type in, remember the formula over here? Equals sum colon e, uh, um, parentheses E2 colon E6 close parentheses. That's, that's too hard. I don't want to have to type that. Excel makes it easy for me. This is where I want the formula. Up here is a little sum button. I click on it and it says, I see numbers above. Linda, is this what you want to add? Yes, it is. Hit the enter key. There's my total. What's wonderful about Excel is that formula will change as I want it to. So for instance, if I edit this number and say, oh, that was really 36,000, by changing the numbers, the formula is recalculating. I wanna move your attention over here. Here I did a quantity and a price and then a total. And notice this one's a little different. The formula up here, it does, it's not summing, it's multiplying. So the formula in this cell is equal sign A5 times B5. So let me show you how I made that. I'm gonna copy these two cells and I'm gonna paste them a couple lines below. 
And the way I created that formula is I clicked on cell C7. You can see that over here. It's C7. That's where I want my total to be. And I'm going to manually type a formula. While I'm, and see this little marquee here, it's wondering if I want to paste again. I'm going to hit escape so that stops running. I want to put my formula here. I'm clicking in that, and then I'm pressing the equal key. And now I'm clicking on the first cell that I want to have in my formula, A7. I want to multiply. Multiplication is the asterisk key, the shift of your eight key. I want to multiply this one by cell B7. And I have that. And look, at it did all the formula for me. I hit enter. There is my number. I use a lot of Excel spreadsheets. And when everything, when all the text is black, you don't really know where the formulas are and where they aren't. And I come back to worksheets again and again. And if I, like, let's look at this one over here. If I type something over this formula, we'll type something wrong. We'll say it was 220,000. That looks like it's summing what's above, but it's not. It isn't. I just messed up my formula. I typed a number there. And um, just to give you another way that I've seen this happen is someone will have this number 14351. Okay, 14, 114351. And that is still correct. Look at that. That is still adding things. But this is no longer a formula. It's correct as long as no one touches these numbers. As soon as we touch a number, this isn't calculating anymore. Because it's hard to see where your formulas are, I'm going to remove that. I like to make them a slightly different color. Notice here I made this blue. The reason it's blue is when it prints, it's pretty close to black, so it'll be dark. If I highlight it in yellow or I highlight it in some strong color and I print it out, it uses a lot of toner. I just need it to be visually um, obvious to me. So if I'm working on a spreadsheet or maybe I'm creating someone else's spreadsheet, I will go in and I will create the formula. Notice I'm hitting the sum button. And then I will make that formula a slightly different color. I'm going to go up to the font up here. If I click on this right here, it's going to make it blue. That's the same color I used last time. If I want a different color, I choose the drop down next to it and I can choose a different color. I don't recommend green because sometimes we use colors on numbers and green means positive and you would want it to be red if it were a negative number, but if I'm overriding the color, that's not helpful. So that's why I choose blue. And now if I close this sheet and I come back to it next week or next month, I know for myself that this is a formula. I also create spreadsheets for people where they enter information in. So let me give you an example. And I'm gonna use the, um, the feature of auto-populate. I can drag things and it's smart enough to know that if I meant, if I took January and dragged it, I probably want February next. If I'm working with someone in my team and I want them to enter information, I would go in here. This is, this is my own personal approach to this. And I've done this for myself. I like a pale yellow cell. I go in here and I put some borders around it. And I'll, I want to copy the, the number formats or, well, actually I'll show you. This is, this is exactly how I learn. I start building it. This formula, what it's telling the, the computer is sum the four cells above. So let's go to February and let's put in some numbers. And notice we don't have the same uh, number formats here. There's different ways we could do it. I'm going to go here and do it this way. And then I'm going to decrease my decimals. And I can hit the sum button here. Or since this formula is just calculating the things above and it's already been formatted blue, here I drag January across to get February. Here I'm going to drag this formula across. My mouse makes different shapes as I'm over the cell. So it's important to notice the shape. When I take it over the bottom corner where there's a little box there, I go from a white cross to a black one. I hold down the left mouse button and drag across. 
it drags the formula over. It translates the formula. So this one is column I. It knows I moved one column over to column J. So it translates the formula into column J for me. And there, there it is. And let's say we want to do the same thing for March. The, the number zero, because there's nothing in yet. We'll give it some data. And a frequent thing we do in businesses, let me move things over a little bit here, is quarter end information, Q1. So we might want to know how the West did for product A. When we hit the sum button below, it looks for which direction the sum might be, and it guessed above. Now over here, when I hit the sum button, it says, I see a bunch of numbers on the left. Is this what you want to have? And then I enter it. And I can go up here and I can format that cell. I can make it blue because it's a formula. And now when I drag it down, oh, look what happens. It sums all of them. But see this right here? The reason we see the pound, pound, pound sign is the cell's not wide enough to display the number. The fix for that, there's a few. When you want to resize a column, you go to the right of it and drag it bigger or smaller. Or my favorite feature, go to the top right, double click, and it adjusts to the best fit. And you can take these things and you can align them, you can make them center, you can determine what looks great for your results. So that is the formulas. Now let's say we wanna print something and I actually have, let's see how much I have on this page. I'm just gonna scroll one way or the other. We have these things we practice. We're gonna print this information out because the page layout really matters. We're going to the page layout up here on the top. Actually, before I proceed, Emily, are there any questions that I can address in the material we've covered already? If so, feel free to let me know. I see we have three comments in the chat. Um, so none regarding this, there's one that might be applicable for a little later. Okay, thank you. So if I were to print this out, notice I have like empty columns here. I could play with the spacing a little bit, but let's see what it's gonna look like. We're gonna go up to the page layout and what is my orientation of the page right now? It's portrait. And let's see, I'm gonna go with more details on the page layout. It is currently set to be portrait. Gonna, it's going to print at 100%. And when I go to the margins, okay, see how that's laid out. I don't have any headers or footers and there's nothing about the actual sheet. Okay, so let's say file, print, and this is what it's going to look like. Notice it prints on two pages. And if I want this to print on one page, let me go back and let's go into the page layout. And first I'm gonna change it to landscape. I want it to print long rather than tall. And let's see how that changes it. So let's go to print and see how that looks. Okay, now we're on one page. That's much better, but we're very much at the top of the page. And maybe I don't need all the information that's here. So let's go back. And this information, we have some columns we can delete. In fact, we don't even need this column anymore. Let's see how that looks getting better, but maybe I only want to show this right here. Page layout. We have our margins. You can center things vertically and horizontally. Header, footer, and but sheet. So print area, what is my print area? I don't have a defined print area right now. That's why it's showing everything. If I choose a print area, I click in there and then I choose what I wanna have print. That is all that I will have available to it. So now I think I just sent that to my printer. Here we go. So now this is what you're seeing. 
it removed the other information. And this is common. It's common to have a lot of complex information in your Excel file. But what you want to print is just something for a, um, a report for a board of directors. You don't want to print all the details, but you need all the history. So some other things with page layout that is amazingly helpful. Go back up here, page layout. And notice as I click on each menu item up here, when I click on one, the information below it changes. So page layout, and then this little drop down box brings me all the detailed options. Header footer, I personally have a technique that I use with each of my files. I customize the footer. The reason for that is when I print something out, if I find that file in two months, I want to know what the name of the file is. And I also like to know what the tab is, because I usually have a lot of tabs within one particular file. And the way you do that is to choose the custom footer. The left section for me, I'd like to have the file name, insert file name. Then I do space hyphen space. And then I like the tab name. Notice down here, I have different tab names. I have formulas. I have January, February. When I have the printout, I know exactly where it came from. If I have a large report, I also want to know the pages and how many total pages there are. So here I'm typing in the word page and I'm hitting a space. And then when you hover your mouse over the different buttons, this one is the page that's printed of the total number of pages. So if I have a seven page document, each of the seven pages will say one of seven, two of seven, three of seven. Really helpful. And at the bottom, you'll also see the file name. So I'm gonna say, okay, here. And notice you can see it right here. There's my file name, hyphen, my tab name. If I come across this file in the future and I can't remember what it was, there's the name. I can go into my computer. I can search for that file and find it. I'm gonna say, okay and it saved those page setup features for me. And with uh, a very important thing for you to know when it comes to Excel is what are you doing for security? You can put passwords on Excel files, but I really caution you when doing that. And I know it from firsthand experience because just this morning I had an issue with a password and me not remembering what it was. And thank goodness for all the systems nowadays that can send me um, something to my cell phone, uh, to my email, where I can go in and reset a password. When you set passwords in Excel files, imagine that if you can't find it, there's no recovery. So what I recommend to people is put your file in a place that is secure. If you're sharing something with someone, don't share them with them the original document. Share with them a PDF of it so they just see information and can't edit the document. Another thing to help yourself in this situation is if you ever do have to put a password on it, make a copy of that document, put some abbreviation on it that lets you know it's password protected. And that's the one you share, but you keep your original not password protected. That way you can recover because it has been very sad when I have someone come to me and say, I have this file, there's a password on it. I used to use it a lot. I don't know the password, we're stuck. Maybe you could talk with Microsoft and they could show you a way around it. I have not come across that solution yet. But the security of your material, when you're talking about the finances of your business, you want to make sure that these documents are in a safe place. And with Excel, data is only as good as your ability to, to check it and make sure it makes sense. If I have an error in this formula, for instance, I wanna change something. Um, there's another way to do a sum. Let me, let me show you another option here for formulas. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna do it manually. I'm gonna hit the equal sign and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna click on that cell and I'm gonna hit the plus sign. I'm gonna hit on that cell and the plus sign and that one and the plus sign. And now instead of adding, I'm gonna subtract. So that's a, oops, that's a hyphen and then the bottom one. Now notice up here, it's very clear that there's three pluses and one minus. When I hit enter, I still get a number. But if I don't sanity check my number and look at it, a formula is calculating, but I might have an error in my formula. And if I have an error in that formula and I then drag it to my other cells, 
I have errors there as well. So it's very important that you double check your work or you have someone else review it for you. If you're doing complex formulas, every once in a while, go in and check and make sure, do some manual checks. And, and this is what's really great. You can actually highlight cells and look in the bottom right area and see the formulas as a sum. So for instance, let me do this right here. I have those four cells selected. When I look down here in the bottom, here I have sum 115684. Well, my goodness, that does not match this number. There must be a problem with my formula. So you want to be able to check your own numbers. And a lot of people, when you're a solo business owner, you don't necessarily have someone else to look at those numbers for you. So I'm the same way. I have my own business. I will create something. Maybe it's in the afternoon or the evening when I'm doing my side business. And then if I'm creating something important for my business, I sleep on it. And then the next day or in a couple of days when I feel fresh, I review it and look at it as if I've never seen it before. And I double check all my formulas. And there are auditing features you can go in. That's an advanced feature that you can go in and learn more about. Um, it's A-U-D-I-T-I-N-G, audit. And here's the best tip that you will learn from this training. When you're doing something in Excel and you don't know how to do it, good old YouTube University has saved me so many times. I will go to YouTube. I will be specific, trying to understand a complicated formula. I'll describe what I want to do. Oftentimes, I'll find videos as short as one minute or even shorter showing me how to calculate that formula. So Excel has so much information. If you are relatively new um, to Excel, I encourage you to go out and look for something that is similar to what you're trying to create. Learn from someone that's already done it. There's a lot of people out there creating videos on Excel, making them available for you in YouTube. So I encourage you to be a student and learn from other people. It will make your project working in Excel so much easier. So the page layout, um, other things, if we have a document that is big and it doesn't quite fit on the page, let me go back to page layout again. Right now we're printing it at 100%. If it's, we're just dropping, we're moving over to two pages, you print it and you're like, darn it, that far right column is falling over on the right side. You can adjust the percentage. You can have it print a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. And that, or if you don't know exactly what it is, you can say fit to one page, one page tall, uh, one page wide, one page, page tall, and let Excel make the adjustment for you. So that is really helpful. I have that um, frequently when I'm working on real large files. It's like, gosh, I need it larger because that's how I'm working, but I don't necessarily need it to print that same way. We have the margins. This is the centering um, vertically and horizontally. We talked about the footer. Custom header, same way. You can do put different things on the header for the sheet. And then back here at the sheet, when you're doing larger Excel spreadsheets, rows to repeat at the top is very helpful. If you have months of data and you're printing something out and you get to the second sheet, you want that header to pop up again so that you see what the top of each column is. That's when you're repeating, um, you're repeating a row at the top. Or you could do a column on the left side and you just need to say which column. So what I would do here is I would click row to repeat on the top and I would click on this one. And then this particular row will show at the top of each page as I print. Let me backspace over that. And other things that will print. Do you want the grid lines to print? That's those real, real faint lines. Normally they don't, you can choose to print. You can have it print in black and white. Um, draft quality means you're gonna use less toner. You can print the row and column heading. So that's this area over here, the numbers or the letters across the top, you can print those. You can print your comment notes. And if you have any errors in your formulas, you can be notified of that. When there's multiple pages, how do you want it to print? Do you want it to go across, one, two, three pages across and then drop down and do page four? Or do you want it to go all the way down the left side and then move over to the right? So you're, you're telling the system how to do that. Print preview is always helpful. You can see what you're gonna get, saves a lot of paper. And 
and Emily, I just wanted to pause for a moment um, to see if anyone has, if you have any specific feature that, boy, this class would be amazing if we would talk about that feature, go ahead and put that in the chat. Because often at the end, we have a few minutes to address some other topics. So now I'm going to switch over to the topic of charts. Let me just make a couple of adjustments to my screen, get some things out of my way. There we go. So here is an example. We have the months across the top. We have toys, cards, and candy, items sold by month. So this is quantity. So there's no dollar signs. This is the quantity of items sold by month. And notice there's no total yet. So I can go in here and add that total. Now, I don't have the total up here. And the reason for that is I'm in the page layout menu. So I'm gonna click on the home menu. And here's my sum button. It assumes I wanna do everything to the left starting at B7. So I'm gonna hit enter, which is yes. And then practicing what I taught you, I'm gonna make that blue. And then I get to drag that formula down. So this is helpful for the spreadsheet. But now we'd like to chart that information. Here is what a chart looks like. Here's an example. And this is charting the data above. It has the units on the side and it color codes each. And we can see our key at the bottom, blue is toys, orange is carbs and gray is candy. I think I should have made candy a better color. That's kind of, that's not very fun. So this is, the data is wonderful, but there's nothing quite like the visual to have it really tell you what's happening and when. And my goodness, what happened in February that had to do with candy and what happened in October? My goodness, there are some candy months there. So the way I created that chart is I select the information and right now I can select it with my mouse. I'm using my keyboard. So I'm clicking in the upper left, holding down my shift key and I'm using my arrow keys to select the information. insert and then what i have here is charts recommended charts and there's little samples of what kind of charts i can insert different formulas you can go through you can have a wonderful time playing with this information it's really cool but let's go in and create a basic chart and look at basic charts we have options let's do the 2d chart which is the one that i already showed you and here it is it created it now notice creating the chart, it, it layered it right over my data. I can drag that chart and move it where I want. And then when I print, I have the option of printing the chart only. I can print the chart with data. But looking at this chart, I can then go in here and say, I can look at each thing. Oh, look at this. That's the fill and line, the fill color. And the fill is gray. And we said that just doesn't make you think of candy. Let's go for, um, I like licorice. So let's go with, oops, that's not licorice. Let's go with red. And it kind of works for Valentine's Day too. There we go. So now I just changed the color. Very simple. I, Because I selected one of those bars, it knows it's a series. So all of them changed. And there's a lot of features beyond the basics that I'm covering with you right now. Um, well, actually this class is beyond the basics, but right now when it comes to charts, we're, we're doing the basics of charts. So let me bring this in and I wanna resize it. These little circles on the corner allow me to resize the chart. And as I resize it, you'll notice that everything makes adjustments for it. It's a little harder to read that way. As I make it taller, I get more numbers on my left side. But let's let's change that chart. Let's see, chart element. This is where it's kind of fun. You can be careful because you can get lost in the weeds here. You can try to create something and then all of a sudden you realize there's so much more that you can do.
we have data. Let's see here. Here we are with charts. So we have pie charts. We can do a different. Here's a different chart. This is one that stacks them on top of each other. And this one is applying a little bit of a 3D effect. Um, a great way for you to determine what to do with charts is look at some. Look at some that you think are really effective and without too much uh, fanciness, you know, that makes the, the chart style more important than your data, create something that's going to tell your story. There's nothing like a visual to convey what paragraphs of words would need to explain. It's very obvious to say candy, which is red in October, is substantial here, just as it is over here in February. So that is an introduction to charts for you. Now, another feature that is really powerful a bit for a business is a pivot table. And let me see, I've done a lot of different classes here. Let me, let me see which one might help us the most in this area. Here we go, here's a pivot table. So the pivot table is running a report. This is, and it's easier for you to understand a pivot table when I show you what one is first rather than trying to build one. There's a lot of data collected in an Excel spreadsheet. And to give an example, it's, actually I can just double click right here. This is my total. This is the data. Forgive me, I have to move some menus that are in my way. There we go. I'm gonna make this larger. So this particular table has, 160 rows to it, a lot of material, but it's talking about different, different salespeople and different products that were sold. So we're talking about um, products for the, refri for the kitchen, so refrigerator or the house, dryer, washer, dryer, cooktop, that sort of thing. And different people were selling them. How many did they sell? What was the unit price and the total sale? And when we go back, to the pivot table. So this is important too. See these tabs down here? When you start most Excel files, it usually gives you one, two, and three. But I create them and then I put material in them and I name them. The way you name yours is it starts out with sheet one. You just double click on it and you can replace that or you can put the year and rename it. You just can't have two tabs with the same name. And I can also move these tabs by holding down the shift key and dragging it. Notice the little triangle that appears wherever I let go. That's where it's going to insert it. So here's the chart we just worked on. And these arrows over here are gonna allow me to view more. Now I'm gonna close the right side. See this bar here? This changes the scroll on the right. The more I want to display of my tabs or not, I, intentionally I, I made this large when we started because I didn't want you to see all my other tabs. But now, you know, you get to see behind the scenes what's going on. Now you can see all the different pieces. So here's, here's the data source that I used. Here are some other format pages that I've used in sessions before. So now we're back to the pivot table. I showed you that large collection of data. And what this pivot table is doing is it's gathering that data and summarizing it. Here's each of the reps, that's their initials. Here's what they sold each month. It creates a total. I didn't do anything here other than let the pivot table create this data for me. And these are the different elements on this side of the different fields and how I can manipulate them. And I'll show you more about that in just a moment. So here we're seeing each person by month, we're seeing the totals, these grand totals, and the totals are highlighted, this blue highlighting, that's helping you see that it's not just data, it's a formula. And product, product is up here in what they call the page. Watch this. Here's all my different products. If I wanna say, how did they do for dishwashers? Everything changes. If there's no value, if someone didn't sell it that day, then, or that month, there's no entry at all. And I can go through each product. And the, the pivot table is doing all the work for us. 
And here, this, I'll probably end up messing with this little table down here, but this is the, you also can run pivot charts. So as you're changing things, the chart below is changing. Now I'm going to show you that this is very interactive. These items can be moved. So this one, let's see this one right here. Um, if I wanna move some of these elements, I go here and then I look on this, oops, back and click anywhere in the pivot table itself and it'll show over here. It says my filters, that's that upper left-hand corner. I'm filtering on product and my rows is showing rep. My columns are showing month and I have a value of a total sale. Perhaps I wanna change this around. Perhaps I want to change this. Um, let's see here. The rep, the rep I want to be up here. So it's not just, I took the rep away from this part and I now I can go up here and I can really hone in on the details of just one person at a time. And this person only had sales in March and May. It's only bringing up where there's sales. I can bring the, the rep here and the product down here. Now I can look at just one rep's name or all of them together. This is all the reps. And this is how they did per product. But maybe, I mean, th this is the first time I saw a pivot table, I was a bit overwhelmed. But once you realize the power of what it can do for you, let's take the rep and put the rep down here. And notice I have each rep, their subtotal now is showing at the top and then each of their product sales. Oh, kind of moved my chart out of the way. It makes for a messy chart because there's too much data. And as we scroll down each person, and then there's the grand total for everyone. So it is doing all of this for you. And the key is you keep your original data chart very simple, that first source of data that I showed you. And now you can, you can move, um, I don't have a lot of different elements here, but I can move the product back to the filter. And this is how we started. And we can even take the months and make the months be below. So there's so many ways we can cut this data. We basically are hiding now the, the product, but we could, we, these, are, these are manipulated. We just don't affect the original data. And if you add information at the end of each month, you simply update your pivot table to add the new rows you put at the bottom. And at that point, it will refresh everything for you. Again, I talked about YouTube and it's easier once for me, when I learn, I like to watch first. So I will go out to YouTube and I'll watch a couple videos on pivot tables and I'll see what some of the results are that they come up with. Or you can even go to Google images and search for images of pivot table results. And you'll find something that seems to mirror the way you look at your business. And then you have a model of what you can shoot for. So I absolutely love pivot tables. When I was a financial analyst, I was in them all the time, all the time. So let's go look at some of the other tabs I have down here and some other things that we can talk about. Here I talked about the, um, the blue ones. Those are formulas. Now, if I create the blue text is a formula, if I create a worksheet, and I personally know that the blue text is a formula and the yellow means enter your data here. I don't need to write that code, but if I give this to someone else, I put on the top of the sheet, blue text is a formula, don't touch it, type in the yellow cells. So if I have someone who's gonna do information, who's gonna capture information for their sales office and then report it to me, I might give it to them like this and say, all you need to do is type in the yellow. Just type in the yellow cells. This is January, oops. I can also abbreviate. I can do January and I can drag that across. And the different, we'll just call this product one. Uh, 
a little. And notice I did product one and it was smart enough to know I must mean product two and three. So there's a lot of time-saving features in Excel to help you make it easier for yourself. The tricky part I have found in using YouTube to look for help is if I don't know the right word to search on, it's very hard to find the formula. And here's a great example. Um, I'll use this for myself. Sometimes people have a data, a collection of data, and they have, all right, I have first name and last name. They're in two different cells. I want to create a formula that adds them together. It's, you know, it doesn't make sense to say this cell plus this cell equals Linda's whole name. The word on that is concatenate. So let's see if we can go up here. Can, can, uh, the problem is I can't spell it. Concatenate. Nope. Formula. Here we go. Concatenate function. And it will show you how to create a formula that I can, that I will end up with Linda Fitzgerald in this cell. It's the concatenate formula. But I can never remember that. I know it now because I've done it so many times. But that might be something that you want to search on in Excel um, or in YouTube to learn more about. Microsoft has a nice search feature right within Excel. I just showed you how to use it. I did it right here. You can search here for something that you want to do. Freeze panes is a great example. Often there are, you're looking at a lot of information and it's a data table and you're scrolling down and you want things to, um, to keep those headers across the top, similar to the printout that I told you earlier when we kept the headers. You can freeze panes. You can freeze certain columns, uh, certain rows on the top. You can freeze certain columns on the side. That's a feature that um, in an older version of Excel, it had a button for, and I used it all the time. And now they took the button away and they've moved it and I have to search around and find it. So I don't worry about where it is. I just search and it brings it up for me. There's a couple features here that I wanna spend um, a minute on, definitely an advanced class. If you don't know this, it would be really helpful for you to know. And I just kind of want to explain it to you um, and not spend too much time, but this is really valuable. Conditional formatting. Conditional formatting will give your Excel spreadsheet um, the numbers a little bit better understanding. Let me go to a, a sheet that will uh, help us explain this. So let's go here and let's do, we're going to take all these numbers. And we're going to do conditional formatting, highlight cell roots. And what you can do is you can determine how things will show up color-wise. You can say, if it's greater than a number, I want it to be a certain color. If it's less than a number, if it's between this and that. You, when you have sales results for a sales team, you want maybe certain people show up in green and some show up in yellow and some show up in red. That might be helpful for you, but don't show it to the whole group. That's not very motivating. But what you can do is have your data, that data table that normally doesn't tell a big story, tell one for you based on the contents. I've used color scales. You can see some examples here. Let me see if I make this a little bit larger, if it will help you. Color scales. Oh, it's, it could be various shades of from red to green. It could be various shades of one from one color not to another. It could be from white to dark green. And the higher the number is, the more dark green than, or the lower, the more white it is. There's so many options here. You can even set up rules. You can say, if the, if the cell is empty, do not put a number in there. Instead type NA, because it's not applicable. There was no data. And then you can set those different rules. And it's just really helpful because data by itself, unless you perform some math on it, unless you tell a story with it, it can be very bland and very hard to understand. So that's why charts are gonna make a big difference for you. Conditional formatting and pivot tables. And all of those items, know that this is recorded. You can go back and watch this again. And you might hear me talk about a particular topic, write that topic down. Go to YouTube, search, learn more. You can even do searches right here within the Microsoft tool and find more things about it. But conditional formatting is very helpful. 
let me look at some other options here that I want to make sure you're aware of. My personal favorite of everything is the undo button. When I make a mistake, I can hit the undo button and it takes me back to what I did before. And if I said, oh, you know, I did it right, I can redo it, I can undo multiple times going back. Really, really helpful. I also want to show you an important feature. Let's get to where we had some data. Let me move this chart out of the way. Okay, so we have data here. And let's say that there's some important information to explain these numbers here in April. Boy, that cards number was really low. And that is not usual for us. And there's a story behind it, but how do I add that story? I write, to get this shortcut menu, I click on the four and then I right click it with my mouse. And I can either insert a comment or insert a note. Notes have been around a long time. When you type in a note, it says who entered it. And I'm going to say, ran out of stock. And then click away. And now when someone says, wow, this is unusually low, but look, there's a little red triangle there. There's more to tell. So they, just by hovering over the four, it says ran out of stock. Well, that'll explain why the number's so low. But maybe I'm sharing this information with someone else and I want it to be a little more con not confrontational, conversational. I am going to go here and I am going to, um, let's see, I can edit the note I just created, but instead let's remove that note. We're gonna delete the note. And instead, we want to put in a comment. A comment is a conversation. This is where I put something and someone else working on the spreadsheet. Maybe I'm, um, I'm really wondering what happened to this April number. Tell me more, more about why this number is so low. All right, and then I hit enter. Oops. Now, the other people in my group sharing this file will notice there's a, a comment there and they'll be able to go in. And when they reply to it, I will see who commented on it. So those are um, the difference between notes and comments, very helpful. I put notes in fields often. And when you print it out, it doesn't show up unless you want it to. You can have a sheet at the end that prints all your notes. You have different ways you can address that. But Notes and comments are wonderful ways to either leave reminders to yourself or to communicate with people on your team. Looking through some other features here that I wanna help you with. When you right click your mouse, I'm over a blank cell and I right click, I have the opportunity to cut whatever the content says, I can copy it. If I have something already being held on the clipboard, I can paste. Um, smart lookup, like all these things, you can click on them and test what they are. Honestly, I have not used smart lookup. Um, insert, I can insert something there. I can insert a cell. If I insert a cell, it makes everything else shift. I can delete it. I can clear the contents. I can apply filters. I can sort things. We already talked about the comments, format the cell and links. So there's so much to learn in Excel. I personally, we have a few minutes left. I personally love to watch people use Excel because just about every time I learn something I didn't know. So I am going to close this right now. Actually, I'll just stop sharing and I'm gonna switch back over to PowerPoint. And ask, do we have any questions? Um, so yeah, so it looks like someone was asking uh, what version of Excel are you using? Okay, so I'm gonna stop share and I am going to share my Excel again. It's funny that you say that because I don't even know which version I'm using. Let's see, we are here. I use it on so many different computers. I don't necessarily know which one is which. It is relatively recent. And let's let's see if it'll tell us here. Dun, 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 dun. Which version of Excel? If you're seeing it and I'm not, let me know. 
I am not seeing it. That is a great question. This is Stump the Trainer. What version of Excel do you have? Okay, this is this is going to be um, this is this is me sharing with you how I learn things. Watch this, Emily. I am going to share a different screen, and I'm just going to take you over. Um, I'm going to go to YouTube on my own real quick. Sometimes you don't want to share screens that you don't know what the results are. So I'm going to go to YouTube, and I'm going to search Excel, how to learn what, uh, learn the version. Excel Basics Online Course. Oh my goodness, I have so many Excel options here. Which version of Excel do you have? And there is a training session of four minutes and nine seconds that will show me that. I don't have the time to watch that with you right now. Um, let's see, let me ask another question. What is the current version of Excel? You can go to oh. your account in the Excel. I'm sorry, tell me again. In your Excel, when you uh -huh. open, uh, yes. you can go down and you see your account on your left, and that will tell you which one are you using. My account on my left. I am not. Let me share my screen and I'll have you walk through this with me. Um, hold on just a moment. I got to get back to sharing. Okay, and then while they're uh, getting that set up, yeah. um, if you can. Click on the um, the survey link I put in the chat. Just let us know how we did today, how we can improve, and that really helps us out. Okay, so let me go in and share that Excel screen. And this is what I love about Excel. I am learning things from people all the time. So walk me through how you think I can learn what my Excel version is. In just a second. In okay. your file, go to your file. File, okay. Go down, click in your account. Account, got it. So using Home and Student 2021. There we go. Thank you so much. See, this is amazing what we learned from each other. I love it. Well, so I am going to stop sharing. And we have one more minute. Let me take us back to PowerPoint real quick so I can wrap things up for you. A quick sharing. Uh, here we go. So we'd also like to know if there are more topics you would like to learn about. Emily and the SBDC office here is always creating tra trainings and we wanna make sure we provide trainings that you would like to see. We are so glad that you joined us today. Thank you so much for interacting with us. And any final questions, if we didn't get to them, you're welcome to put them in the chat and we'll give you about, oh, another one more minute that will stay on the line as we wrap up to collect those questions and Emily can forward them on to me so we can help you um, solve your business concerns as far as it relates to Excel. As I mentioned, this is the Shasta Cascade SBDC and we are located in Redding, California. Thank you so much, Emily. Emily was my host today and you can reach Emily. She is a wealth of information supporting not only me because I am a presenter for SBDC and I'm also a client of our SBDC. Emily is helping all of us and you with your business. You can find us at our website here, Emily's emails there, and you can also find an SBDC near you. We are um, all over the US. Here's an, a location, americasbdc.org slash find hyphen your hyphen SBDC to find the location near you. And here are the different ways that you can reach us. You can reach us through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we are glad to help you. And also LinkedIn. We're glad to help you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you at another training. Thank you. So Emily, if you could stop the recording for me.